The trial today hath ended. Was it fair? Certainly. This body is a representation of justice. Laziness is not permitted. Somebody tell me why I constantly get locked up ever since I've known Vertin. First locked up in a suitcase, then a foundation cell, now this! Oh, what else could it be if Vertin weren't the jinx? irrational number here. <sighs> I'm knocked. What does it say here? Freedom will be granted once the proof is completed. <sighs> That's to say, I have to prove myself not an irrational number to get out of here. Which is exactly what I've been trying to do, isn't it? Right. <laughs> Captain, maybe you're in the wrong direction. This apple presumes that the followers on this island have a close connection with Pythagoreanism. Pythagoras, that ancient Greek mathematician, the guy who said something about the opposite side of a right triangle? Isn't he the guy who lives in sometime BC? Maths is only a part of the Pythagoreans' achievement, but from a more universal perspective, they are a mysterious group of scholars. Believing things are made up of numbers, venerating integer numbers, abstaining from beans, and the religious collective lifestyle. These are all pointing to Pythagoreanism. The earliest Pythagorean school perished because of the discovery of irrational numbers, which explains their odium of it. At that time, a deviant student named Hippasus discovered root two, and the theories based on the ratio of integers they hold dear were upended. Hippasus himself was drowned in the sea. This apple assumes they see the integers as the standard of virtue, and people can increase the number they rank through study and self-improvement. Besides, they are convinced that a numerical code is hidden in everything and everyone. Whoever can solve the code can obtain the truth of the world. what's going on. This pirate has had enough of this moral standard, which is obviously prudish, backward, and lacks humanitarian spirit. I'm going to tackle the root cause of this misfortune. Why am I not surprised? The captain quickly gives the sufficient and prerequisite condition to prove herself an irrational number. This apple may be able to offer some help.
cactuses are flying in the same direction. Is this their habit, or...? Ah, the roof is about to collapse! <coughs> so far, this place has made the London Juvenile Detention Centre a heaven on earth. Is there a piece of paper? Did one of the Abraxases drop this? Strange. The unsolvable puzzle. Is this a math problem? 0 0.4, 0 0.7, 1, 1.6, 2.8. 5.2, 10, and 19.6. Eight numbers in total are listed in this order. There are eight symbols below, respectively representing the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus. Maybe it is a hint that we should fill the symbols in the blank box after the numbers. That sign says, to complete the proof. Does it mean to solve this puzzle? Ha! How unsolvable can it be? Clearly, each of these eight numbers should represent one planet. We can easily find the missing planet by trying them one by one. And our Mr. Apple here is the king of the Times crossword. Yes? I think there is a difference between this and a crossword. In this apple's humble opinion, the ratio of certain numbers should match this number sequence, such as the radius, volume, or rotation period. Wouldn't the sun be absurdly large if these numbers stand for their sizes? <laughs> hey! The underground critters are back! Go away! Don't touch my nose! It's not your food!
the left. Forward! Whose heart is beating so loud? Thank you for your cooperation. Agents have guns. It's called common sense. something. Whose heart is beating so loud? Forward. Don't be so furious. Want to be shunted to hold on please captain seems like the critters are trying to tell us something they are pointing at the sign of the sun is that so <laughs> even the critters on this island know math the sun <gasps> What if the sun is just here to serve as a reference point? I read an IAU's report in the Times two years ago. You know, the International Astronomical Union. Earth's average distance to the sun is approximately 93 million miles. As for Mercury, the average distance is 36 million and Venus 67 million miles. Let's say if we take the distance between Earth and the Sun as one astronomical unit, then the distance between the Sun and Mercury would be approximately 0.4 units, and Venus 0.7 units. 
There you go. These numbers are the ratio of their average distance to the sun to the Earth sun distance. The average distance from Mars to the Sun is about 142 million miles, Jupiter about 484 million miles, Saturn 886 million miles, and Uranus 1.786 billion miles. By rough calculation, and if we round the results to one decimal place, Mars would be 1.6 unit, Jupiter 5.2 unit, Saturn 10 unit and Uranus 19.6 unit. That's weird. All these numbers one can hardly remember have become so clear in my mind. But if these numbers stand for the ratio of distance, what's the planet for 2.8? There's no planet between Mars and Jupiter. If the Sun is the reference, we will have one planet missing here. Is it really a puzzle unsolvable? Aha! Nothing is unsolvable. You are looking at the solution. There must be one planet out there, unknown to us as of yet, located between Mars and Jupiter. Celestial body, which I have never seen before. Captain, this apple has an impression on this. There is indeed a star between Mars and Jupiter. It is called the Ceres, discovered by Piazzi Giuseppe, an Italian priest in 1801. Ceres? Did we... did we just validate its existence? Is the universe truly arranged according to... this sequence? Could this be... the ultimate key of everything? Regulus! Regulus! What are you doing? Got food poisoning after accidentally eating one of those critters? Hmm? Odd. My head hurts. What was that? I'll make it short. Stanetta is in detention. They're planning to sentence her to death by giving her the poisoned wine. They what?
As you can see, this school on the island lives in a box made by the truth. Even if they have a donut in their hands when they are hungry, they still see a topological space. Like the cute ring attached to an initiation toy. It's not food anyways. But if you give them a puzzle, they will enjoy it like the best Kaiserschmarrn. Oh, my apologies. I was not talking about the one you are holding. No. With all due respect, that thing in your hand is pretty old. The mold on it seems to come from the 18th century, judging from the smell. I'm sure you know it will make you sick if eaten. But we have to admit, it is not just ordinary mold. It reminds us of the story in which, once, a merchant's son looked up at the night sky and found the answer to the stars for us. The young man firmly believed that the movement of the stars and the sun follows certain laws. Just like how the delicate gears in a watch work together. And his point was even proven correct by Zeus's grandfather. When another gentleman observed the sky through the reflecting telescope he took great pains to make, a celestial body was exactly there. What was it called? Mm. Ah, 19.6. The eighth number in the sequence, the seventh planet in the solar system, and the legendary God of the Sky. If the world was not created by God, are there any theories we can use to explain such a beautiful law? Yes, the one that says it never actually exists. Anyone can see the breach in this number sequence. That is the planet, which is supposed to be the fifth number in the sequence. I mean, how come we have never seen it before? if it does exist. Either God is wrong, or we've been blind all this time. What do you think? Oh, darling. I forgot that you are one of the boring people from the modern times. You need to understand that we are talking about a forgotten masterpiece from the 18th century. Back then, Everyone still believed that the imaginary creatures living on the stars got to witness the birth of God's creations. And the everlasting temperature changes up there were set to punish the exiles. Oh, how romantic. It was a beautiful dream, but it was still ended, eventually, by another discovery. The eighth planet. Not the Ceres, nor the Uranus, but a new planet. People found it through more precise astronomical data and calculation, proving that the number sequence found by the merchant's son was only a myth. Now we are clear of what we've been talking about. It's an unsolvable puzzle. It makes no sense from the very beginning. We found the Ceres because it happened to be there. It is real, and no one can deny its existence. In other words, we can perfectly prove the rationality of mathematics because we invented it. Ah, <sighs> it's been a good dream, I suppose. Now, Imagine that you are walking alone in the darkest valley ever, trying to drag your fragile body upward as much as possible before it is worn out. Hoarse cries squeeze their way out of your mouth to ask for a response from the gods. Suddenly, an afflatus dawns on you. The next moment, a miracle happens. You are already at the top of the mountain, witnessing the rise of a huge celestial body from the skyline. Even if it's only in your imagination, you have just witnessed the dawn of the creation. And the shock 
is real. 